I owed an actual service. In today's video, I'll hopefully be showing you how to make one of these. So I'll put a link on the screen to the Equipment for a Fantasy Adventure video which talks about this and it would probably be worth watching that first so that you understand what it is that I'm trying to make here. Now this one that I have in my hand, which is the one that I usually use, I actually made from scratch and I haven't got enough fabric on hand right now to make one of these to show you how to do it from scratch but what I'm instead hoping to do is to show you a nice, quick, easy and simple way to make one of these for your kit. So if you're a beginner crafter, this is the perfect project for you. What will you need? First, you're going to need one of these. This is a square drawstring linen bag. Um, essentially, it's a laundry bag. You can buy them off the internet really, really cheaply. And you're also going to need something to this effect. So this is like um, a hemp or linen webbing, which essentially it's a strap. People who do upholstery use them to make those crossed over mesh bottom for chairs and stuff. Uh, you can buy it pretty easily on the internet. So if you're carrying a dark coloured bag, you're a lot less likely to be hunted by goblins or trolls or something. So that's always good, isn't it? So what I'm also going to use is I'm going to use a sachet of fabric dye and some salt, which you have to use to mix with the fabric dye. Obviously, that is a unnecessary step. And if you were happy with the light colour, you could just go with the light colour. Also, there will be a giveaway at the end of this video, so stay tuned for the end of this video, if you're interested. First, a disclaimer. Sorry if it's a bit echoey in here. Whatever fabric dye you buy, you've got to make sure that it's appropriate for natural materials. So, if it's appropriate for natural materials like linen, cotton and all that, then it should work fine for this purpose. So. What I have here is um, Dylon fabric dye. That is appropriate for natural materials. Now I'm going to essentially show you the steps for dyeing fabric using this. All the fabric dyes have different instructions. So if you've bought a different type of fabric dye, obviously this is not going to be how you actually work through the process. So the first step is read the instructions. Weigh the fabric then wash thoroughly and leave damp. So I'm not going to bother weighing the fabric because I'm just going to use a full sachet anyway and honestly it will be fine. All I'm doing is making it darker. It's required that you wash the fabric first so I'll just wash it using an ordinary washing soap. And the reason that you wash the fabric first is because if there's any grease or anything on the fabric it will stop it from working properly. The washing machine's finished and this is nice and clean and still wet which is important because otherwise you get dry bits stuck inside the fabric and then bubbles cause you to get holes in the dye. The next thing that I've got to do is weigh out the appropriate amount of salt. Now it depends on which dye you use but most dyes require salt as a fixing agent and this one says that for the full pack of dye you've got to use 250 grams of salt. So I'm using dishwasher salt. The only problem is using dishwasher salt is that it's in massive bits which means it takes quite a long time to dissolve. So you need to use really hot water to get it to dissolve. Now I've got everything measured out, it's time to make a concoction. Also wear gloves when you do this. In order to get the dishwasher salt to dissolve, I'm going to have to make sure the water's nice and hot. So what I've got is I've got a bucket and I've got about about this much cold water in the bottom of it so that the bucket doesn't melt when I add the boiling water. So tap water isn't quite hot enough for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the salt in. I'm 
and now I've just put the salt in and I've read the instructions and it says to put the dye in first. I hope if I put them in at the same time it will still work. Read the instructions before you start. Hot water. So now I'll stir it until all the stuff is nicely dissolved. And when all the stuff is nicely dissolved, I'll fill up the water to the required 6 litres and hopefully it will work. So that is now filled to the required 6 litres and I dropped my stirring stick in here somewhere so I've had to find a glove to get it back. Now what I think I'll do is I'll open it and I'll make sure that the bag gets filled with water so that the dye soaks in properly. Now the instructions for doing this say to stir it for 15 minutes and then leave it to sit for 45 minutes and stir occasionally during that time. And then when it's done, I get it out and wash it in clean water and it should be brown. In my experience, it takes about three washes before the dye stops coming out of it and its finished colour is about maybe a little bit lighter than what you initially get when you dye it. So if it goes too dark, don't panic. And this is what it looks like after 45 minutes in the dye bath. Nice and brown. So I'll get it out and I'll wash it in fresh water a couple of times and then tomorrow when it's dry hopefully I'll be able to make it into something. I've now got the bag out of the fabric dye and I have washed it and washed it again and washed it again several times and now it's dry and it has actually come out a really good kind of brown colour. So the colour that it is, is nearly exactly the same as the colour of my strap, which is a way better result than I could have hoped for. Now the only thing that you'll notice is when you dye something, you find out what the thread used to make it is made of. So you can see that the thread has stayed white, uh, which is very often what happens if you dye any clothing or anything as well. And the reason the thread has stayed white is because the thread will probably be made out of nylon or polyester neither of which are a natural fiber so the dye won't fix to those but it will fix to the fabric so unfortunately there isn't a lot you can do about that apart from the fact that it is only a run around the top so if you wanted to over sew that by hand with a thicker thread so that it looks more authentic you could Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the very end of the webbing over and I'm going to sew it down so that it doesn't fray and then I'm going to sew it onto the fabric of the bottom corner of the bag like that. I'm going to have to work out what the correct length for this is however I don't actually have to think about that until I've done the first side because I can just leave the webbing uncut until I get to the other side. So for this bit, I'm actually going to be using the waxed linen thread that I use for leather work, but you can use whatever you've got, providing it's a relatively strong thread. Or if you've got a sewing machine strong enough, you could probably do this on a sewing machine, but my sewing machine wouldn't go through the webbing, so I'm stuck to doing it by hand. Now it's sealed so that it can't fray, what I think I'll do is I'll just pin it onto the bag where I want to sew it so that it doesn't move and then I'll just sort of sew round in a rectangle using running stitch so that it is nice and firmly attached on. Now I've left quite a big area of overlap and the reason I've done that is because the fabric the bag is made out of is quite thin so the larger the area that I've sewn it on the stronger it will be. The only thing that would be worth noting is you have to um, take care not to sew through both sides of the bag.
So I have sewn round it once and what I'll basically do is I'll sew round it again but I'll go the other way up. So everywhere where there's an under stitch, I'll do an over stitch and then it will create a straight line so it will look a bit neater, but it will also be twice as strong. Right, so I'd say that's securely attached onto there. Now, one thing I will mention before I go on to doing the other one and the length is I don't know if you can actually see that on there. Hang on. But where I've actually done the stitching, the stitching follows a curved shape around the corners all the way round. It doesn't follow a straight shape with straight corners like you often see on webbing straps and stuff like here for example, where you've got a sharp corner. And the reason I've done that is because modern fabrics like nylon and stuff are much stronger than naturally made fabrics like cotton and linen. So when you sew your strap onto the cotton or the linen, what will happen is when it pulls on a sharp corner, it will start to tear the linen. Whereas if you have a curved shape on your sewing, it is a lot less likely to do that. Not an 100% guarantee, of course. Something like this typically wouldn't take that much weight, but it would be all right for like light loads. However, if you wanted to make one of these out of like a canvas sack so that it's much stronger, then you could do that. There's no reason why you shouldn't use the exact same technique. Right, what about length? So what you've got to remember with these is that when you actually close the bag, you're tying a knot in the webbing. And doing that in itself actually uses up quite a lot of webbing. So you're gonna have to add probably anything up to a foot to make this so that it'll end up the right length for you to use as a backpack. What I'm actually going to do for this is I'm going to measure the one I've already got and I'm going to make this one with a very slightly longer strap so that it's that bit more versatile. So I have just measured my original one and my original one, the webbing strap, is 75 inches from where it leaves the bag to where it joins it again. So that's from there through to the point that would be there, not from the beginning of the bit that's sewn on. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do my new one to 80. Now that's my 80 line marked on there. So it'll be five inches longer. And that means that I'm going to cut it off about there. And now it looks like I'm going to repeat the entire thing that I did on that side on that side exactly the same. The only thing that's probably worth mentioning with this process is just make sure that the webbing isn't twisted because if you sew it onto the other end then there's nothing you can really do about it being twisted so it's like keep it flat and run it through your hand so that it hasn't turned over until you get to the other end and then turn it round 180 without turning it over like that um, and then put it straight on and then lie it out on the floor just to check that it's not got unwanted twists and turns in it otherwise it will annoy you forever The only other thing that is worth mentioning is these tend to only have a drawstring from one side. If you wanted to improve it a bit, so the one that I made, I did a drawstring from both sides so that you can pull it closed quicker. All it is, is there's two completely separate loops of string in here. If you pull opposite ones, it draws it closed. So you could actually add that to your bag 
if you want it and all you would have to do then is just unpick the seam on the other side around that loop and do that circle of stitches that you've just seen me do on this side and then thread a second piece of cord through and tie a knot on that side instead of that side and then you'd be able to whip them closed quickly. Now you've got both ends of your webbing sewn onto the bag this is essentially done so minus the dyeing process which takes a really long time because you've got to wait 45 minutes and wash it and dry it afterwards the actual work time for making this is probably less than an hour even if you're slow at sewing because it is literally just a rectangle so i think the total length of hand sewing on this project is about 12 inches for both sides so there you have it, how to make one of these. Now the only other thing I might mention is if you wanted to make it look more authentic you could switch the string for a different type of string so you could use like a hemp cord or something because this is essentially a shoelace so it's got the little plastic ends on it. Either that or you could whip it with the linen cord so that it looked more authentic instead of with the plastic but i think that's where i'm going to leave it for today so i hope that you all found that helpful because to me it seemed like a pretty good beginner crafting project for you all and also if there's one thing a fantasy adventurer needs it's a way to carry stuff let's get on to the more important aspect of this video the giveaway this has been a pretty long time in the coming. I think I promised this to you um, something stupid like a year ago. But I have finally managed to honestly find the time to make the video and to come up with some kind of idea for it. Here's what I have in mind. So I just have something quick to show you first. And that is the bag that I made today. Since you last saw it in the video, I have added some things. I have done a row of hand stitching around the front of the bag and I've put a little bit of cross stitch on both ends just for niceness. I've also cut that slit so that it's possible to add an extra piece of cord so that it ties up more easily. Except I haven't got an extra piece of cord to add so that will have to be somebody else's little addition to this project. Now I have also added some embroidery on the front of the bag here which is like a fairly straightforward dwarven design and the reason that I have done that is quite simply because this is the item being given away in today's giveaway. Now I know this isn't much however the main thing for me is I've got one already I don't need two of them and I've made a second one for the purposes of making a video to show you how to make one and also it's nice and small and light when it's rolled up which means that it won't cost too much to post so now you all know what it is that you're going to be getting if you win how is this going to work well I've never done a YouTube giveaway before I've kind of not really got much of an idea how this works so this is what I've come up with. Obviously if you don't want this, don't enter into the giveaway and leave this to go to somebody who actually does want it or need it in their kit. If you want this and you want to participate, how you do that is going to appear on the screen in a little while. The winner will find out who they are on Halloween and that's the other thing that I was going to add as a little bit of an update in this video. Every year up until now I've done a Halloween video of some kind. Unfortunately I don't think that I'm going to have time to do that this year so if I don't manage to come out with a Halloween video you'll find out who you are through a channel community post. So all of you who enter the giveaway keep your eye on those on Halloween and you'll find out who you are. So to all of you who decide to participate in this good luck and I will see you in the next video.